I've been putting up a fight for so long. Sometimes it's hard to stay strong, and I fall on my knees, and I tell God, please rescue me, because I done seen it all. I've been to the bottom trying to get to the top, and I tell myself, boy, you can never stop. You got to stay on your grind. And that's exactly what I've been doing, been in the game for so long, and now I'm up here putting up a fight every day, every night, yeah, ending up with all these scars all over my body. Yo, what it do, it's your boy MTZ King, and I'm back on your screen. Hope everybody has a great, amazing, blessed Sunday, happy Super Bowl Sunday. I'm going for the Rams. I have my baby brothers going for the Patriots. I said I was going for the Rams. Nah, so you said you were going for the Patriots. Shut up. <laughs> I just have my mind. Uh, but anyways, though, I hope I have a great day. Good. Let's get and I'll see y'all in a bit though. Chill. What it do, fam? I'm outside. This is the first time since yesterday that I actually been outside. And I just came outside because my dad's fixing the car. And he needed a knife and I bought him one, but it was the wrong one, so he wouldn't go get the right one. So I figured I would vlog while I'm right here real quick. You already know I got my blue and yellow, blue and yellow. Uh-huh. You know what it is. <laughs> uh, shit. My stomach is still hurting, I've got wondering. I haven't been able to eat and for some reason my teeth feel so weak but I think it's from the medicines. Like whenever I bite on something, it just feels so damn it feels weird. Like I, I don't know, it just feels weird, but anyways though, I'll see y'all in a bit though. I hope y'all having a good day. Chill. What's up fam? I'm currently watching the Super Bowl. It's already 541 my time, which is in Dallas, Texas. And if y'all notice, I literally cut this. I it literally feels like <laughs> I told my brother it feels like a baby's butt. It's um, it's literally shaved with razor shave. That's why it looks so bald. Um, but yeah, um, watching the Super Bowl, my dad's cooking up some food, and we're about to eat, and we're just chilling watching the game. Right now, it's just currently me, my two brothers, and my dad. And my dad's cooking while he's watching the game. And my mom's upstairs putting clothes away. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing right now. And from my colors, you could already tell who I'm going for. I'm going for the Rams, like I said. Win or lose. I just want to see somebody different win this year. And anyways, though, so I'll catch y'all on the flip side. And I hope y'all are enjoying your day. And much love. Chill. Yo, what it do? So the Super Bowl is over. It's finally 9-12. It's actually 10 12 in Atlanta where they were playing that now. It was a good ass game. The team I was going for, they lost, but literally, I think for a Super Bowl, it was pretty, it was okay, but I just expected more better plays and whatnot. Like, I literally thought it was probably going to be tied or going to overtime. That's what I thought at first. But then when they made that touchdown, I was just like, fuck. And then when I seen the time, I was just like, man. It would have been different if they would have made at least, like, one or two touchdowns. And then I fucking hate it because we almost had two touchdowns uh, with Cook. But they ended up fucking, you know what I'm saying? It was a good-ass game, though. I got I, You got to give it to the Rams. You know, like I said, my team is literally the Seattle Seahawks. I go for the Seattle Seahawks or for the Cowboys. And then when it's just teams that, I, I, I go for a lot of teams, though. I'm not really picky. Like, if I open my damn closet, I have a whole bunch of jerseys. From, I got, like, the Buccaneers. I got the I got the Buccaneers. I got the freaking Vikings. I got the Titans. Like, I got a lot of throwback. And they're all throwback players that don't even play with them anymore. Um, So, I really, you know what I'm saying? But my diehard team is the Seattle Seahawks. And after that, I, you know, go for the uh, Dallas Cowboys because I, my girl's a big-ass fan of the Cowboys. And then, of course, I live in the uh, city of Dallas, you know, uh, born and raised and shit. So, it's just like, fuck. 
Um, and it's crazy because um, Austin from the Ace family, he was actually at the game. He was going for the, you know, he lives in Los Angeles. I believe that's where he's from, California. So he was going for the Rams. And I was just like, fuck, like, you know what I'm saying? I know a lot of YouTubers that were going for the, for the Rams. A lot of people were going for the Rams, though, best believe, though. But at the end, you know, they fucking have Tom Brady. He's been in the game for so long. He knows his shit. And it's kind of like a, you kind of put it like in the NBA, like, you know, Michael Jordan was one of the greatest and now you got Steph Perry, who is, like, one of the greatest. So it's kind of something like that. When you know how to fucking lead your team up to a win, you're going to come out with a W. Regardless of the situation, no matter if it's at the last minutes, last seconds, you're going to come up with a damn W. And that's exactly what Tom Brady did. Um, Real facts, I used to be a fucking Tom Brady fan, but then when... They started coming out that shit when they were like deflating balls and shit. I was just like, I don't, I don't roll with that kind of shit, right there. I don't roll with because that's like that's cheating, and I don't believe in cheating. Just like I don't believe like you know what I'm saying anything else like that has to do with the cheating shit. So I was just like, nah, whatever. But I, true facts, I used to be a fucking Tom Brady fan at one point when I was a kid, and or a teenager, whatever. But. It was a good fucking game. Uh, the you know we, I got to enjoy it with my with my with like with my dad, my mom, and my three youngest brothers younger than me. Well, they're not too young; they're just younger than me, because I'm about to be thirty. One's twenty seven, the other one's twenty four, and then my baby brother who is eight. And with my sister in law, we we all were here, whatever, watching the game. My dad cooked, we ate, we watched the game. Only my other my other brother, my older brother, and my older sister they didn't come, and my my niece and my nephew, my nieces and my nephew they didn't come. But it was pretty cool being able to watch the game just with them because that's usually how just how it always has been, where i watched the super bowl with my like my siblings and stuff and my and my parents um of course you know i wish i could have watched it with my girl but then at the end of the day she really ain't too into fucking football any damn way if it's not the cowboys like she really ain't into it so it's just like damn you know it's kind of hard dragging girls that are not into sports to watch sports because then they don't understand it. So they just like, what the fuck, you know, like, they'll just be like, yeah, and they won't even know what the hell they're yang about. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Um, basically, I've like, just been chilling. I was just sitting down, chilling or whatever. Uh, we're just all there chilling and stuff. So, And it was crazy because my sister-in-law actually crashed out. <laughs> Uh, she crashed out then she woke up like at already like third quarter going into fourth quarter she then woke up whatever and we're just right there all chilling and stuff and like I'm saying I'm glad I got to chill with them because not this Monday but next Monday the boy's gonna be going into surgery and it's it's something that's been exciting for me, but it's something overwhelming for me at the same time. Only because I am a person that gets very impatient in being in a room, like, every day. And when I'm in a relationship, I respect my partner, and I don't try to do me. A lot of people... My, not a lot of people though, because a lot of people actually are just like me. That when you're in a relationship, you just respect your partner and you just don't go out because you just, you you know how you are as a person. So to like put boundaries and all that, it's like, okay, when you're in a relationship, it's about boundaries. It's about fucking communication. It's about all that stuff. So I'm not the type of person that if I want to go out, I'd rather go out with my partner. I'd rather go out with my girl than to fucking go out by myself with these so-called friends. I don't have friends like that, like friends, friends, you know what I'm saying? I do have people that I do, I used to talk to, and they've been trying to communicate with me. But these are people that I consider consider more family, because at the end of the day, it's not about the blood. It's about the 
fucking how you grew up with this person and these people i know them since i was yay big i was little i was a kid and to me they just grew up being family like i call them cousins or whatever their, their parents i call them you know tia tio and uncle whatever you know their brothers to me they're considered my cousins as well so i'm the type when i'm in a relationship i don't go out really anywhere like i don't go to no damn club i don't I don't go to the movies with anybody. It's not with my partner. That's just me, though. But at the end of the day, it's just about respect. Because at the end of the day, when you're in a relationship, it's not about yourself no more. You can't be selfish and you can't be pity. And like I said yesterday, you can't be... If you're trying to be humble, so you're trying to be better than what you were. Or better learn from your mistakes and be a better person, you know, to keep it 100 with that person. Because about being in a relationship, it's always about something serious. It's not about, oh, I'm going to keep a secret or I'm not going to tell you this. I'm not going to tell you that. I'm going to hide this from you. I'm not going to tell you who I talk to. Because at the end of the day, that's where you bump heads. It's like if you're going to have friends, okay, cool. But, you know, if you're talking to your friends or if a dude's sliding up in your DMs or in your messenger, let your boy know don't keep it a secret because there shouldn't be no secrets between a relationship. A relationship should be something that is focused on not just you, but your partner, and be like, you know what, this is what's going on, da, da, da. that's where a lot of people mess up in relationships, is the lack of communication, and the lack of, you know, trying to keep stuff, you're not supposed to keep anything from your partner, because at the end of the day, you're supposed to be a team, you're supposed to be in it to win it, that's just love, that's the real meaning of love, so right now, I'm going through this thing, where I'm excited about surgery, but I'm not about excited about to be laid up in this damn room, and just be stuck in my four walls like I always am but right now I can get up and go outside and take a walk if I want to when I'm having surgery I'm not going to be able to do that because I'm going to have two tubes installed in me after after sur well during surgery I'm going to have two tubes installed in me and they're not going to come out until like probably two to three weeks just depends so I'm not going to be able to be roaming the streets because I have to take care of that and make sure it doesn't get it because it could get an infection. It could get bacteria. So I have to be really isolated and that's going to fucking suck. So that's like really playing with my mind right now, you know, because I'm just like, fuck, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person that even if I'm in pain, I don't like to sleep. I, I hate, I refuse to sleep. And it's like, yes, I'm going to try to vlog for y'all, but it's going to be getting frustrating because y'all are just going to see me in my room, you know? So it's just like, fuck, you know? And it's just like, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up. That's my favorite holiday. It's really, a lot of people say it's not like a real holiday, but to me it's a holiday. That's something that I just love. I love Valentine's Day. And, yeah, so a lot of things going on, guys. A lot, a lot of things have been running through my mind. And it's just like, fuck. I hate it though, like, sometimes, like, I wish I still, like, talk to my cousins and stuff, because even if I could just get my cousins, my guy cousins to come through, because growing up, that all, all I really got along with were all just my guy cousins, and if I could just get all my guy cousins to come through and chill with me, like, it would be dope, it just fucking sucks, man, like, Oh no, guys, I'm literally fucking like, and the reason I'm only thinking about it more and more because the days is getting closer and closer and closer, like not counting tomorrow already, it's already going to be seven days until surgery. And I'm just like, fuck, like real talk, I'm just like, damn, I'm excited, but I'm just not excited for the aftermath. I'm not excited, I don't want I don't want to feel the pain, even though I know I'm going to feel the pain. I don't want to feel the miserableness of being fucking locked up in my room. And I don't know, man, but it's just really difficult on my end because I just been like, I never had a normal life. And that's something that nobody will understand me. Like, that's the reason why I am like the man that I am today. Like, I'm really like, it's like when I have somebody in my life, like, I just focus on that somebody. I don't focus on anything around me really or none of that, you know? Um. Uh, yeah, when it comes down to, like, you know, my parents and, you know, my, my siblings and stuff, yes. Or, like, you know, my nephew and my nieces, yes. But I know my boundaries on and my limits and stuff. So, I'm just, like, 
I don't know it's just really hard for somebody to understand a person like me like I said all my life I just been fighting to live and fighting to see another day I didn't get to live a damn nor normal freaking teenage your life or you know I didn't get to live that fucking that life where it's like oh yeah I was at the fucking club drinking it up when I once I turned 21 doing this doing that nah my main goal was just fucking busy to fucking live to survive to make it to see another day and now I feel like I'm in the same boat all over again I feel like I just got a couple of years to feel that I was free like I didn't have to worry about nothing but all of a sudden 2016 came along and all these damn shits came with it and now it's just up to me making decisions it's either making decisions to get surgery for stuff so I won't get cancer or either just wait it out and be like if I get cancer then it is what it is but like I told y'all before I'd rather have fucking scars than to fucking sit there and you know what I'm saying sit there and fucking suffer with cancer cause I done lost so many from cancer and would I want to see myself in that situation no I wouldn't cause honestly when you have cancer you should they try to remove it or not they try to start you off chemo will I survive chemo my honest answer I don't think I would survive it cause I'm already skinny and that shit eats you and I really wouldn't care about the losing the hair but it's just about you know I'm already skinny and I don't want to look like more bonier than what I already look and it's hard it's really really hard you wouldn't understand somebody until you're living in their shoes till you're walking in their shoes to what it's like and like I'm just a person I'm just a dude when I love I love hard when I love you, I'm going to love you. I'm, you're going to be unconditionally to me. That's the love that's going to be. Like my girl, she's like my first true real love. I had a big ass crush on her since I was in high school. And finally, you know, years passed. And to finally ask her out and she said yes. And it was just like, man, you know what? I just want to show her. I just want to show her and give her all the love that I know she deserves. Cause like I know what she's been through and I don't think any woman any girl should have to go through what she what she went through and it fucking sucks and it hurts because it's just like you know I'm just trying to be the best that I could be to my ability like I'm trying to be like to me I love her kids like I don't even see them as step kids I see them as kids I see them as my own because at the end of the day it's not their fault and at the end of the day, if I could be there for them physically, emotionally, whatever it is, it's like, damn, you know, when they see me, they get excited, they run to me, they give me hugs, whatnot, you know. Every every chance that I get to see them, I don't get to see them as often as much as I wish I could. But whenever I get the chance to see them, it's just like, wow, like literally, it's like I feel like tears want to just come down my eyes because it's just like, like I really want to see them before this big surgery. So I'm going to try to make it a goal to at least see them on Saturday or Friday, probably get to try to see them all together. And because I know it's going to be a while until I can see them again because of surgery. And even when I see them through Facebook, I get excited because to me, like, those are my babies. Like, I give my life for each and every one of them because I love them all. Sometimes it's hard for me to show it because I don't want them to see me that. I guess I, I guess I, I don't want them to see me the way I'm getting now emotional, but I freaking love them all with all my heart. Like they all have their own personalities and I love them. I love something from each and every one of them. It's like they have their own special little thing. And I just love it. And it's just crazy. Like seeing them grow now. Like when I came into their life, they were like so young. And now it's like they're already growing. And it's like the oldest, she just turned 10. So it's just like, damn, you're about to be a teenager before my eyes. And I'm just like, wow. Like, like wow. And to me, it's like, that's my daughter. It's like, damn, I'm going to have a teenage daughter. It's the same thing that, you know, with, with my little girl. 
and then with my little boy and then my baby is just like wow but i love them all unconditionally like i can't explain the love that i have for them kids because it's just god knows what he's doing and he does it at his time and there was a blessing and i'm probably gonna have to make this on another video but i can only tell y'all god knows why he did this and to me my girl and all all the kids are a blessing to me and i wouldn't trade them for anything in the world and i've been loyal and faithful to them since the day i came into their life until now like i said i don't want anybody else if i can't have them i don't want anybody else i'd rather just be by myself if i can't have them because to me they're my world they're my everything because they showed me what love really was and i didn't just get love just from their mom i got love from my whole package the whole wolf pack like she would call them and i fucking love them but to me now they're my i gain i gain my cubs <laughs> they're my baby cubs i wouldn't call them a wolf pack i would call them my, my cubs since I consider myself the lion, I consider my queen the tiger, and there are baby cubs. And it was so amazing when they started calling me, hey, oh, that's my stepdad. They started telling their friends like that. And then I remember at one point, one of the little girls was like, can I just call you dad? And it's like, yeah, if you feel comfortable. But I never freaking made them call me dad. I never made them call me stepdad. It's like I gained that in my own way by showing them that love by showing them whatever i could show them buying them whatever little thing i could buy them probably i couldn't buy them something big but even if it was a piece of candy they were grateful for it and they were happy they always ask me for chips and whenever i have the money i give it to them if i don't i just try to explain to them that i don't or even if we have to buy just one bag and divide it into all four of them i try i try my best you know but i wouldn't trade my girl or the kids for nothing in this world because at the end of the day they're 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 like the missing piece of my heart and that's that unconditional love that i just it's not even a thing that you could say oh because i'm just attached to them no it's that freaking love that when i just first met them it was love at first sight and like we were talking about it. it's kind of like the titanic how rose and jack just bumped into each other next thing you know they like fell in love but they never made it official but we made it official and tomorrow is the fourth and i did ask my girl out august the fourth 2016 and it's been one hell of a ride but i wouldn't take it back because at the end of the day that's what i wanted and that's what i wanted to the day that i die with that being said man this video is a little bit emotional it's a little bit here and there but i just wanted to let y'all know what i've been thinking of what's been going through my mind but i will see y'all tomorrow and tomorrow i will go to work for a little bit for like four hours for the rest of the week i'm gonna be off so i don't know what i'm gonna be doing with my spare time probably just trying to get out the house for the meantime to not be so locked in here but with that being said, much love. Thanks for all the love and support that y'all all give me. It means the world to me. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. So my girl, I love you with all my heart. You're my world. You're my everything. So are the babies. They're all, y'all all completely. Me, completely. To all my family, to my parents. Thank you. I do want to thank each and every one of y'all. From my parents, to my girl, to my kids, to my brothers. To my nieces, to my nephews, sisters, thank y'all all for supporting me. Thank y'all all for being here for me. Thank y'all all for trying to give me the courage and motivation. Even though it's, I know it hasn't been easy for my parents and for my siblings to see me the way that I've been. Especially as a kid until now. Going through so much shit. But even with all this, I got to keep my head up high. Because I have a lot of people that look up to me. And I have a lot of y'all that look up to me. And I appreciate that. If you ask me how am I still standing. I could just say by the grace of God. And with that being said. May God protect each and every one of y'all. Because the day he comes back. I hope everybody makes it to the promised land. Because, you know, on one side, you're going to see the gold. On one side, you're going to see the cheap. 
it's up to you if you want to go into eternal life you have to you have to give your heart to God. Not just 5%, but a thousand percent. I wouldn't want to see anybody that I love suffer or go to a place that you just don't want to be stuck in there for the rest. Like your soul's going to be stuck there forever. If y'all think this is forever, this ain't forever. You haven't seen forever yet. If you're trying to see a mansion and walk in gold, that's the promise, the, after, the afterlife. That's where you're trying to go, where God's going to give you a new name. But with that being said, may God protect each and every one of y'all and be with y'all at every time and moment. Whether if you believe in him or you don't believe in him, he's always with you. And with that being said, I will see y'all tomorrow. And I'm out. Have a great night. Chill.